I'm Marty Stauffer. The nine-banded armadillo is as unique as it is homely. Its ability to produce litters of four genetically identical young is just one of the armadillo's many unusual traits. The name armadillo is derived from a Spanish word meaning little armored one. With a scaly shell, tough skin, and clumsy gait, it looks like a holdover from the dinosaur days. Though hardly a dinosaur, armadillos have survived on this earth for 55 million years. Tough, pioneering, and adaptable, this animal thrives in the face of civilization. Let's get to know the amazing armadillo. the rocky hill country of Texas to the palmetto grasslands of Florida is armadillo country. America's nine-banded armadillo is the most widespread of the 20 species of armadillo scattered throughout Central and South America. It's the only species found as far north as the United States. This strange little creature almost defies description. Even the famous naturalist, John James Audubon, had trouble finding the words for such an oddball. In the 1840s, he wrote that it resembled a small pig in the shell of a turtle. It must have reminded the ancient Aztecs of a turtle also. They called it Ayotochti, meaning rabbit turtle. In reality, the armadillo is a mammal that spends most of its time probing for food with its finely barbed, sticky tongue. The armadillo stumbles along at the blinding speed of about one-third of a mile per hour, totally obsessed in its search for little invertebrates like ants, earthworms, beetles, spiders, snails, and termites. The astonishing armadillo may consume 14,000 ants in one meal, averaging 70 ants with each swipe of its tongue. This nearsighted, clumsy creature seems like the Mr. Magoo of the mammal world to me, shuffling along, oblivious to any danger that may be lurking nearby. Armadillos that pair up for mating soon go their separate ways. Even though the armadillo is weighted down by its heavy armored coat, it can swim by gulping air to inflate its stomach and intestines. And if that's too much trouble, it can simply hold its breath for up to six minutes and walk across the bottom. The armadillo shares its range with many animals, including the perky spotted skunk.
The skunk may benefit from an association with this compulsive little digger, sometimes making its home in abandoned armadillo dens. In this case, the skunk may wish it had never seen an armadillo. Completely unaware of the skunk, the armadillo concentrates on its search for insects. Other animals that adopt old armadillo dens are the endangered gopher tortoise of Florida sand hills and the burrowing owl, a ground dweller that is totally dependent upon others, like the armadillo, for suitable housing. The armadillo's shell has been compared to a cowboy's chaps. Hard plates are covered by leathery skin. Scaly rings encircle the tail. Eight to ten flexible bands connect the middle and back parts of the shell. Strange as it may seem, armadillos are related to sloths and anteaters. Their backbone structure, joints, and claws are similar. They have no canines or incisors, only well-hidden small molars in the back of the long mouth. Adults are the size of an average house cat, about two feet long and seven to 10 pounds. The head is covered with scales. Only the underside is unprotected. Much of armadillo country is populated with diamondback rattlesnakes. Most become foul tempered at the sight of anything that approaches within 20 feet. Take another look at how the rattler's infamous fangs glance off the armadillo's shell. For millions of years, the armadillo has remained basically unchanged, an ancient mammal with a remarkable compulsion for travel. The species evolved in isolation when South America was an island. Then three million years ago, the Isthmus of Panama emerged, linking the Americas. Armadillo-like creatures ventured northward across the land bridge. 12 feet long, heavily armored animals lived from what is now Arizona to Florida. Like other prehistoric giants, they died out at the end of the last ice age. Just 150 years ago, the amazing armadillo returned. A miniature version forded the Rio Grande and spread east to the Mississippi. Then in 1922, a pair of armadillos escaped from a small zoo in Florida and began populating the South. Meanwhile, the Western pioneers somehow crossed the Mississippi to join forces with the Eastern escapees. Today, these hardy little immigrants populate nearly every state from Kansas to the Carolinas. Experts believe that this most recent armadillo invasion 
represents the fastest migration in the history of mammals. Nowhere are their exploits more celebrated than in their native state. This odd little armored tank is a Texas trademark. The armadillo is an unofficial mascot of the Dallas Cowboys. Evidence of armadillo fever is everywhere. Even manufacturers of armadillo memorabilia must be amazed at its popularity. <laughs> armadillo races are staged, pitting armadillos and their jockeys against other teams. Some people will swear that these exciting sprint events rival thoroughbred horse races in intensity. Armadillos are going to be a little feisty. Some will be. If they're moving around a lot, Armadillo Kurt will show you how to there hold you them. Yeah, you need to hold them in the front. Just pick Armadillos up are very, very yeah. sensitive. Don't gently. put a lot of pressure on their shell. Right. Okay, just hold, hold them kind of in the front. That looks like Jumper Boy. So lane number one, we have Jumper Boy. Lane number two, we have, this is Slewfoot. Ready? On your mark, get set, go! And they're out! The reward for these armored sprinters is a well-deserved nap in a wet tub of dirt. But the armadillo is more than an entertainer. It offers the gift of hope to millions of people around the world who suffer from the disfiguring disease of leprosy. Over 20 years ago, Dr. Eleanor Storrs discovered that armadillos can be infected with leprosy. Right. Look, Dave, there's one way over there. After searching for years for an animal that could contract the disease, the armadillo breakthrough occurred. A critically important discovery considering that leprosy bacteria cannot be raised artificially. Because of its low body temperature, the armadillo is an ideal host. Although leprosy is the least infectious of contagious human diseases, there are 12 to 15 million sufferers worldwide, and thousands of cases in the United States alone. One infected animal can produce enough bacilli to meet the current world demand for lepromin, a substance used to predict how leprosy will progress in those afflicted. Doctors can then prescribe the most appropriate treatment for their patients. Because all female armadillos produce four genetically identical young from just one fertilized egg, researchers have the opportunity to study the relationship between leprosy and genetics. Her hope, and that of other dedicated scientists, is that a cure for leprosy is just around the corner, thanks to the armadillo. It's spring in central Florida and a female armadillo is searching for a den site. Although she may have as many as 15 burrows, 
scattered throughout the sandy palmetto forest. This one is special, for it will house her next litter of young. With her long, strong claws, she begins in earnest. Before she's done, she will excavate a tunnel that may be 20 feet long, leading to a multi-chambered den five feet below ground. An armadillo may not be fast enough to outrun a human, but it's a world-class digger. If stressed, the female can, amazingly, delay giving birth for over two and a half years. Normal gestation is eight to nine months. Born fully developed with their eyes open, the four little carbon copies have pink leathery shells that will harden with age. Leaving her babies in the safety of the den, the female begins to forage. It will be two years before these newborns are fully grown armadillos. A female bobwhite quail is rousted off her clutch of eggs when the armadillo mother stumbles by. Although armadillos are accused of predating quail nests, it seems more likely that they trip over the eggs by accident. Their mouths and teeth are poorly adapted for egg eating, and scientific studies have revealed traces of birds' eggs in only five of 281 armadillo stomachs examined. In the long run, the armadillo may be more friend than foe, eating ant species that are known to attack young quail. At two months of age, the young quadruplets seem eager to begin foraging with their mother. If this youngster survives its first few years, it could live to the ripe old age of 10 or more. Armadillos can smell insects six inches underground. This baby is learning fast, managing to snag a night crawler buried in moist soil near the den. Much like pigs, armadillos, even baby ones, 
love to wade and wallow in water. Compelled by instinct and hunger, the little armadillos forage in much the same dedicated way as their elders. In a single year, one armadillo can eat 200 pounds of insects, many of them harmful garden pests. By the end of summer, the young will be independent. Until then, they'll continue to retire to the safety of their birthplace. Millions of years of evolution have not prepared the armadillo for a 20th century world of motor vehicles. Even crossing a quiet country road can be dangerous. By autumn, the young armadillos have struck out on their own. Even though cars and trucks can straddle their squatty bodies, armadillos sometimes instinctively jump into the air at the instant a vehicle passes over. As luck would have it, the youngster escapes. The opossum, North America's only marsupial, may play possum with predators, but it's not about to tolerate a nosy young armadillo. The wandering youngster begins to follow the edge of a lake. Movement catches the eye of the predatory alligator. The young armadillo concentrates on a big meal just below the surface, paying no attention to the approaching gators. If ignorance is bliss, then the armadillo must be in a constant state of euphoria.
Incredibly, the young armadillo outmaneuvers its pursuers, retreating to the safety of a sandy den. The only barrier to future armadillo migration is weather. They can't tolerate the cold and they don't hibernate. So for now, they'll continue to meander the waterways, highways, and forests of our southern states. In a world where many species are disappearing, the armadillo is one of the few success stories. It spread from Mexico into most of our southern states in less than 150 years represents the fastest range expansion of any mammal. By virtue of this pioneering ability and its reproductive talents, it appears that we'll never be without the amazing armadillo. I'm Marty Stauffer. Until next time, enjoy our wild America.